Let the dragon consume you! <laughs> Kill me, the beast-sided! The bird watcher is back at it one more time. Here's your host, Brian and Clay. They're about to bring you some sweet, sweet Overwatch action. That's right. We are back, and we are talking about worlds. We are talking about a sweet new map, and we have All-Star Weekend on the horizon. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing good, man. Uh, Overwatch has been good to me. Sort of. I haven't, I'm in that situation again where work has gotten busy enough where I'm, I'm not getting to play as much as I would like, especially during an event. Um, and unfortunately, Blizzard is being mean and not allowing me just to buy my Canadian flag. So I have to keep playing until it unlocks randomly. You got to grind it out, man. I, really swear I've got, I guess I, you can't buy it, huh? No, you can't. Huh? Um, all your all the player icons have to be unlocked through boxes. Oh, you got to grind it out, buddy. Yeah, and I'm getting every other random flag. Uh, no offense to Austria. Yeah, you just got uh, a bunch of those. Yeah, <laughs> I got a whole collection of Austria yeah, flags. Nice, nice. Um, but besides that, I don't know. It's good, man. It's, it's, it's a good summer. Summer. Summer games snuck up on me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a good thing. That means they have, they're having plenty of events. So I have yet to play any Lucio Ball, but with only six days, seven days left in uh, the competitive season eleven, I've just been trying to grind at this point. Just you know, towards the end of the season, people take it a little bit less serious. Uh, I can yeah. tell on some of my lower end accounts that uh, people are kind of just. They're in there to have fun, uh, or just to screw around. So, but yeah, it seems like the worst time to have fun at the end. Just go just screw around during the other thirty the, plus days. Yeah, right. Uh, right. And then Not get what off. I'm trying so to get all my exactly. uh, yeah, exactly. all my placement games done with on all these random accounts. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm getting a lot of instant lock torbs and sims. A lot more than I would like. Yeah. Uh, just because sims different doesn't mean you can insta locker. Yeah. Especially if you don't know how to play her. That's uh, that's the big thing, right? Oh yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what do we have on the docket for news this week? Okay, so Overwatch, for all you people who aren't playing the game or own it yet, which I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> uh, you're probably a Fortnite player. Shout out to Fortnite. Yeah, um, but this weekend, starting the 23rd through the 28th, to encompass everybody internationally, uh, it'll be free to play. You'll be able to download it on your uh, PS4, Xbox, and PC. I think there's pre-downloads started already for PC. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and during that time frame, you can play like normal. And how it works is that if any progression you get on that account, so you want to use an account that you may be planning on actually using, not like a throwaway. If you have any progression or any boxes or anything like that, once you activate your account, you keep all your progression, which is cool. So it kind of gives you a head start. Um, so check that out. Yeah. Um, outside of that, there is this one's kind of loose. Uh, during an interview about Diablo 3, if nobody knew, you know, Diablo 3 is obviously another Blizzard game on property. They're porting that game to the Switch. And one of the team leads for that spoke about how as they're doing that porting process, they're also looking into the possibility um, of, over, of getting Overwatch on the Switch as well, which could be kind of dope. Uh, people have been yeah. asking forever, considering Fortnite's there now. Um, and Fortnite's everywhere. Hey, bring Overwatch over. It fits kind of the format. Yeah, People want to play it on the go. I guess that's a, the only console that we haven't seen Overwatch on, right, is is the Switch. Yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. Um, and yeah, it's not on iPads easy. or anything like that, right? So right, are, right. Yeah. Um, and then finally, this kind of leads into uh, other news, is that Gamescom happened today, I believe. We're actually recording this on Wednesday um, due to life happening. But uh, Gamescom occurred, and they announced the Busan. It's Busan, Busan. Right? Yep. Yeah, the mm -hmm. new map, which looks gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's new pretty. control map. It's been a minute since we got one. What was the last one? It was Oasis, right? Oasis, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's been a minute. So we got Busan, and then they released the Diva short, who we both think is mediocre at best. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not the best one. It's a little cheesy. Yeah. Uh, it looks great. I mean, it's it's a pretty. Uh, it, the graphics are all really nice looking and stuff yeah, like that. But well the, the writing's you know, subpar at best. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of 
kind of uh, what is it, cut and paste. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's move to some Overwatch, uh, Overwatch news, right? Yeah. So this one, I guess it's not really news. It's just something I wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So during the World insane. Cup, I don't. I think it was against Chinese Taipei. Okay. If I remember correctly, Fraggy gets a shatter on Nepal Village before the point even opens, and I think it was like ten seconds remaining. Which is, is it? Twenty seconds for the point to open? Yeah, twenty seconds. So yeah. almost half the time left. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So he gets the shatter, and it's it's a great video because it looks. The thing about fragging, we'll talk about this when we get to the game, like the games uh, port of, portion of the cast. Fragging make looks like he's just doing whatever on Reinhardt, and that can be very deceptive. Because if you look at, if you watch that clip a couple times, you can see him gauging like who his swing is going to hit, when he's going to fire strike, what direction he's going to fire strike in, who he's going to charge, when he's going to shatter. Like it's and it's consistent because you you we've watched so many of his games at this point. Where it's no longer feels like oh it's just Reinhardt swinging a hammer with supports behind him right right um, don't fall for that because the man is good at fucking Reinhardt yeah always excited to get to see him play Ryan yeah. man it's a it's he's a beast yeah you want to talk about some of these uh, pickups though because we're getting you know season's going to start at any point it'll sneak up on us yeah so players are getting traded people are getting picked up um, who do we have here so uh, we got Shock yeah. releasing. Uh, three players actually. Yes. Uh, it didn't come to not a big surprise for me. I, I think uh, Nami, Doc, and IDDQD. I guess Dak is, is yeah. how he pronounces it. Yeah, but uh, uh, IDDQD didn't play a match um, at all last season. Correct. Played one. Played uh, one. one. Okay. Round. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this kind of ties into what we were taught. You know, the streamer news. Um, he's a, a pretty big Overwatch streamer. He gets quite a few viewers. Yeah. Um, and an old, he's an old name too. Yeah, yeah, he's been playing Overwatch, for, you know, since the beginning. Um, and Shock had mentioned that they will uh, allow streamers to, you know, kind of hold that name, uh, the Shock name, and just be a streamer for him. Yeah. So it's kind of like. Um, and da- uh, Dak has already been doing that too, as well. I've seen oh, him is a couple he? Awesome. Times. Cool. Yeah. I haven't actually watched the stream. It's kind of like Among uh, streams for Philadelphia. He yeah. doesn't play for Philadelphia, but he he carries the Philadelphia name. Which yeah, is same with pretty the cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, um, no surprise there though. A lot of those guys, I think they're you know, kind of focusing and down and narrowing their team down to uh, just like a core eight. So yeah, which is which seems to be the trend because even if you look at contenders and you look at worlds, yeah, it's kind of the trend. Um, and we talked about that uh, moving into next season earlier on a couple of our podcasts about them having smaller teams and then going towards more of the flex style plays players. Um, yeah, that have larger absolutely. pools less specialist type situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, what else? Uh, so Fisher uh, leaving the Gladiators and got picked up by Seoul Dynasty. That's that's pretty I big. Guess, I guess we saw that coming right after their choice to let uh, iRemix play instead. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, I, I knew something had to be happening. Yeah, and I think, well, I, I know that uh, Fisher had commented that he wanted to play with a primarily Korean team just because of language barriers and just organization. Um, yeah, so Seoul needs a, a big main tank that uh, is vocal and you know yeah. going to have somebody that's going to lead the charge. So I think that's what they lacked. You know, they just didn't have a lot of uh, leadership role going on there. So yeah, especially with the whole Muma situation. Or not Muma. Um, uh, I'm blanking. Oh. Yeah, I am too. It sounds like Muma. It's it starts with an M, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, we're blowing it. We're yeah, blowing it. We're letting yoke. the fans down. Why can't I remember that name? We'll come back to it. Well, you look it up. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, so outside of that, we have some PTR news. Very light. Um, they released that at GamesCon as well. And it's so far, it's the Busan map is now available on PTR. Yeah, and I'll be trying that out tonight, actually. I'll exactly. See. And Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, they're finally saying is fixed. Um, any <laughs> Reinhardt players out there, they know the struggle uh, of the inconsistencies of that that uh, shatter, and as well as it could be good and bad. Sometimes you get shatters that you're not supposed to get, right? Um, but then you know you turn around next time, and you can. I remember one where I had a shatter, and the opponents were standing in the flames, looking at me, yeah, and they just kept shooting me. To like, nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'm going to go ahead and switch to D.Va. Yeah. Because bombs don't miss. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you just land near them, blows them up. 
yeah. Exactly. Uh, Miro is the name we're looking Miro, for. Miro, yes. There you Close go. Close to Muma. Yeah. Uh, it's four yeah. letters, right? Yeah. See? So I, I don't know. He might not see any more play. Not with uh, Fisher coming in. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting situation. I think he leaves. Or yeah. they do a swap. Maybe he goes to uh, Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Because that leaves a big hole. And I don't know if I remix and Void. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing in the background with iRemix. So anything can happen. Right. Um, outside of that, I think that's pretty much our news. You had the Atlantic uh, Division and Pacific Division stuff, right? Yeah, this so, is uh, what we were talking about at the end of the yeah. uh, podcast last week. And this is the stream, or not the, this is the talent takedown. So yeah. this is where all the talent we get to see on the desk uh, come together, battle it out. And uh, I've been linking Twitter posts all week to Ryan. Just <laughs> the, the shit talking is on point. Uh, I shouldn't have made that bet. I should look at the team first. You should have. Uh, because Atlantic Division, Malik, Sideshow, Golden Boy, <laughs> Mr. X, um, Doa, Uber Shouts, and Bryn. Um, out of those guys, I think Malik constantly brings up he plays on a PlayStation. So, oh, no. I mean, I, I'm not hating him for him. He's still playing Overwatch, but uh, he's going to have to port over, play with the mouse and keyboard. Yeah. No, I mean, he can plug up. He can, he yeah. can give, They can give him a controller. Yeah, and I, I watch Uber Shouts play uh, a little bit. He's yeah. he's not bad. You know, he plays a couple different roles. But on the Pacific side, we got Rhineforce, we got Crumbs, um, we got Zoe, similar yeah. Monte Cristo, Puckett, and Hexagrams. So seems kind of stacked. I, I think they. I, I felt they should have balanced that team out more. I think whatever team gets to play with Rhineforce just has to have like the clear advantage. I mean, this guy has a ton of experience playing yeah. at a really high level. He is very good. They should have like told him he couldn't play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> discriminate a bit. Like, come on. Right. This is this is crazy. And I'm glad I made this bet because I do love alcohol. And <laughs> when, it's, when it's on you, I love it even more. So, it's but be great. you know what? I don't think. Are, is it going to be a straight up match? I think it's a straight up match. Ah, bullshit. All right, call. They're going to rig it. And my team's yeah. going to win, and then we're going to go from there. Hey, we shall see. The whole All-Star weekend looks really exciting. If yeah. you haven't seen the schedule, man, there's a, there's a bunch of cool stuff. Lucio, Ball, Widowmaker, 1v1. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some sweet stuff. So yeah. excited for that weekend. So I have a question for you. Yeah. You know, kind of just some meta stuff. Is that, well, first, I elaborated on my GOATS knowledge after that last episode because uh, okay. I made the mistake of, and first, I put it down. For the term, yeah. <laughs> as far as the term being around, I kind of was uh, cynical about it when I was Did using it. Did you come it. to the conclusion that I would that they're they're actual goats? I, they're not goat. There's no goat character yet. We do have a hamster, so it's on the table. Yeah. Um, but goats is not everything. Goats is a specific build. Okay. Death ball. And this is actually a discussion that was on competitive uh, Overwatch Reddit. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. But they were saying that death ball was more of the umbrella term. And there were subsets under that. So okay. goats is specific to the uh, Reinhardt, Zarya, Brogan, Lucio, Moira, and Ro- Roadhog. Uh, Diva, I think. Diva, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's one of those two. I know it's a yes. big tank. I think it's Roadhog. Yes, I think. Ah. Yes, no. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, you know, we just proved that we still don't know. Um, yeah. So we'll never on. know. How do you feel about Mercy now, man, with all the changes? Um, I'm still seeing her played uh, quite a bit on ladder. I mean, seeing more Anna than I've ever seen in, like, the last, you know, especially the last couple seasons. We saw a lot of Anna real early when she got released, got buffed a little bit. Um, I still think Mercy has a place, um, still has really good healing output, pairs well with Zenyatta, I think. Um, She has the mobility. She has the mobility. Uh, I just, I don't know, Anna has a... The, the the buff and the nano boost is very good. The anti grenade is very good, and the sleep is very good. It, it's just hard to say. I mean, I the problem I'm seeing right now is we are getting a lot of people shift over to Anna that just can't aim very well. So yes. it's it's really hard to tell. The really good Anna's really impactful on the game. Yeah. Um, shout outs to Karku out there. Karku's been crushing it, man. I've been watching him a good bit. Uh, always used to follow his videos. Yeah. He's a Canadian resident as well. Nice. Uh, but it's one of those things where. That I'm happy you brought that up is people are happy that Anna's back in it, yeah. but a lot of people have forgotten that some of them are can't play her. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> she yeah, is still a difficult character. It's tough. You know, a lot of the times you're getting, you know, Dove by Genji, Winston, Diva. I mean, you yeah. have to be able to survive and heal. The, the biggest thing I like about having an Ana is the extra DPS because Mercy is there, for, you know, pretty for much for one thing she does a little bit of damage boost she does a lot of healing and then she reses people so yeah uh just the chip damage anna does and then the biotic biotic grenade uh when it's really big man it just wins fights so it, yeah it's cool to see her played more okay right. yeah so uh, the last thing i want to talk about is essentially so we announced in our last episode about our gift card competition we wanted to do uh for an amazon gift card twenty dollars and we want to extend that. So we've kind of been in this weird schedule where things have been happening. So we've been releasing as we can. And these two episodes, speaking of previous 22 and this one being 23, are really close together. So there's not enough space. So we're going to extend that out to this uh, podcast as well or this specific episode. Yeah. Uh, so just to reiterate the rules, essentially either go on the competitive Reddit to our post for the episode 22 or episode 23, which will be this episode when it's posted, and comment with your favorite Worlds team, who you're rooting for, and your favorite player that's currently in Worlds. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Just comment, and then we'll pick people, everybody who comments, throw them in a hat, shuffle it around, pick a name. We'll contact that person, and we'll give them their uh, gift card. It's super easy. We just email it to you, and then you get to spend your money on, I don't know, snacks? Amazon has a lot of snacks. Yeah, uh, some good ones guy. too. Some healthy snacks too. Yeah. I suggest a healthy one. Uh, Quest has these protein chips. I meant to tell you about it. I'll send you a link. Oh, definitely. Do. Uh, they're real good. They have that aftertaste because they're not chips. They're actually like baked protein in yeah. that tastes like chips. And they have like barbecue ranch, some good flavors as well. I feel like you're trying to rope me into buying that chip that's like so hot that you like <laughs> pass out. I'm going to order it and be like, oh, this is a protein chip. And then I'm just crying on the other side of the room. <laughs> Let me tell you what the dead giveaway is. That chip only is sold by one. So yeah. like they're individual. Yeah, so okay. if you get one chip, then you know I set you up. Okay. Yeah. All right. If yeah, it's a guys, bag of chips, I... you might be safe. Yeah, Ryan has a bunch of money. Uh, he has really nice shirts. And I love <laughs> to give you twenty dollars. I, on the other hand, have no money, um, but he would love to donate to the cause. So, yeah. All right, all right. So let's get into our first game. So, uh, worlds happened this weekend. We had our first group, which was the Korea group, um, and there's a lot of everybody plays everybody. It's a uh, round robin style uh, for this group, so everybody has to play everybody at least once, and then the top two uh, proceed on. And we picked two matches out of these, and we're going to go through those two, um, the ones that kind of stood out to us, us and the ones we wanted to watch. Uh, and one of those is obvious that I think everybody was ready to see and was a really good one. Yep. Um, this one was kind of just a a curiosity piece to see what Japan has because uh, we don't currently have any Japanese players in OWL, do we, outside I of contenders? So. Uh, and after the display here, there definitely might be sooner or later. We'll see. But... Here we have Japan and Russia is what we're going to start off with. And the only note I have here is that, so for all you OWL fans out there, the only players on this team in this match are Mistakes and Shadowburn for Russia. Um, those are your two representing the league. Everybody else is from Contenders. Um, and the majority of the Japan players are from, was it Cyclops Athlete Gaming? I think it's yep. what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, Cyclops also known real big in the FGC if you're a fighting game guy or gal out there uh they have a lot of representation there oh sweet yeah i did not know yeah. that um they, they take a lot of tournament tournaments in uh, fighting games yeah. um but yeah let's hop into it so we start here with oasis that's our first map um so we start off with control round one here is on university japan kind of showing out here uh getting out coming out of the gates immediately japan gets the first cap they dominate throughout and it's all because of amakin's great hanzo performance uh, this guy, I've, I haven't seen him play before, but his his Hanzo is methodical. Like, he's just picking off. He's hitting his shots. It's pure mechanics. Like, placement here didn't matter. He was just getting the kills. And, yeah. you know, that made University kind of just breeze by. And then you move into Gardens here in Japan once again. Even though Rush is able to get that first cap, there's some back and forth. And we get to a 99-99 situation here. But Depp, their other DPS player, who's now on Widow on a rampage 
So it seems like Japan, you know, Japan takes Oasis here, but it seems like they immediately come out the gate as, oh, we're the sniper team. We're the range guys, right? Um, we kind of got this on lock because their accuracy is insane to me. Um, anything there that kind of, I mean, that, that's a hell of a start. It was a very short match. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing to me, just the coordination um, Japan showed, especially in that yes. first two maps. Mm -hmm. It looks like they played together for a long time. Their tank uh, coordination was really tough. I mean, they were hopping together. They were diving together. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Depp, just a, an insane widow. It uh, mistakes, uh, and we'll find out in this next map, gives up the widow pretty quick. He realizes who is the um, the triumph, you know, <laughs> the victor in the, in the duo. Um, and gives it up pretty quick. So yeah, yeah I'm he, happy he brought that up. Yeah, so we're moving to Eichenwald, and first we start off with Russia on attack. So they get they get they finally get their spotlight right to to show out and show what they're made of. Uh, and both teams use the Widow Far here, which is all right. And Depp's Widow play again continues. He continues that momentum from the previous game, and he's just disruptive, causes a lot of trouble for Russia. Uh, and Russia is able to finally cap point one with like under a minute remaining, but. Because of that struggle, we have mistakes deciding to swap, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, he swaps to Tracer, which that's what he originally came into league under before, you know, having to take over the Dreamcast position. Um, and Depp does the same, which I didn't see that coming. Uh, how do you feel about that? Is that a case where this just makes sense? Because once the Tracer, once the Widow swaps off to something more aggressive, they're just going to be in your face most of the time? Yeah, I mean, I guess hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Um, yeah. It was not good looking here. Uh, he definitely wasn't as good as uh, Mistakes was on the Tracer because um, Mistakes were high impact on the Tracer, yes. causing a lot of trouble for the back line. Um, and I would have just liked to see him stick to the Widow. Uh, we know he's very good at that and just, you know, kind of stick with that. Uh, I don't see the change being really, uh, obviously didn't work really well in Japan's favor. Yeah. So, you know, once again, though Japan is doing a good job of stalling the cart here and Russia is able to cap point two, but they only have about two minutes remaining and point three, they just never are able to get it. So we have Japan holding here um, on this attack. So we swap to Japan on attack and Russia starts with a solid defense uh, mistakes and depth at this point pretty much have a rivalry. It's already like from the get go and this kind of goes throughout. Uh, there's plenty of a uh, tea time as you would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> plenty that of tea time uh they're constantly good. battling back yeah, and forth <laughs> uh but yeah japan's able to cap with about a minute remaining here and mistakes and shadow burn just kind of turn it up uh they immediately kind of flip the switch and they're they're on fire and in form so it looks like both of them at the peak and they cause a lot of trouble here Depp does swap from widow at some point to brogan to contest cart better but he sacrifices being able to deal with the fara and it's a shadow burn fara yeah, uh, that seemed like a poor judgment at that at that point. But I think they were on the back foot and just trying to do whatever they can or could. Uh, but it does result in Russia taking this map. So it's a, a great turnaround from how they previously came out the gate. Uh, seems like Russia just needed to warm up. Yep. Um, yeah. So then we move into Volskaya and we start with attack Russia here. Uh, Japan is running an interesting. Uh, sorry, interesting defense comp here and i want to see what your take on this is so they start with brogan anna sombra genji winston diva yeah and I mean, russia's just you, running standard dive yeah i guess if you want to try to throw them off um obviously the tracer wasn't working um and the widow they with the dive coming in they i guess just backing out of the widow was their call i maybe switching up with the sombra being disruptive in the back line i don't know didn't love it um it's cool to see every once in a while. I like really good Sombras, but the amount of time you have to set up with Sombra, you know, getting the MP, getting the big hacks off, it's so hard against Dive. I think uh, hacking on Winston is very hard. I mean, maybe against the Ryan comp, it's yeah. not too bad, but yeah, didn't love it. Yeah, so it doesn't work. <laughs> it's a surprise there, right? Uh, it doesn't work. Russia caps point one quickly. Russia then has a bunch of solid attempts, which this is a great one to watch as well. Yeah. Um, because this shows, like, you talked about their coordination, Japan's coordination and their teamwork, and just knowing what's going on. J Russia really has really solid attempts here, and Japan stops every last one of them effectively. They don't, br like, they don't win it out. They don't roll over Russia, but they always come out on the, at the top end of it because they make the right decisions at the right time. And the biggest part of that is Depp's timing on Genji is damn near perfect. 
I'm not saying that he's a ridiculously good Genji. I'm not saying that he's getting sick blades every two seconds. I'm saying that he knows exactly when to kill someone or who he needs to kill and when to pop his blades and who he needs to kill his blades with. Uh, And that leads to them pretty much dragging it out here. And after about uh, the final battle, Rush is able to cap it uh, a full, uh, get a full cap in overtime. Uh, But this one was interesting and definitely impressive, even though they were able to cap. Um, but we, then we move into attack and Japan gets full old. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Russia stonewalls them here. Um, they just can't, they can't get through that gate. And yeah. Do anything effective. They're getting picked off really quickly. It's, it's a, it's a rough yeah. situation here. Just can't figure out who to dive either. I mean, they're, they're running the dive comp and they let Shadowburn sit on the same, you know, we're talking Volskaya. We're talking the first point, yeah. that first middle, you know, pylon, I guess it's like a hut. He doesn't move. He sits there the entire time and yeah. uh, just uncontested. Just a lot of arrows coming down. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, and then our final map, we move into Rialto here. And, you know, Rush is still on fire. And Mistakes is now playing. He's completely warmed up. And you can kind of see it in his face. Uh, he's more confident, especially on when they put the camera on him. He, he knows he's doing better uh, than that first game, or that first uh, map. Yeah. But Mistakes here. Absolutely on fire leads to Russia kind of getting a quick point on attack, point one on attack. Uh, they continue that m- momentum. They get a few short stalls, but they're kind of in control of all those fights when it happens. Japan can never get a, like a complete defensive footing. They never get an actual honest fight uh, because of these picks. And Russia caps point two and three quickly. Uh, nothing surprising here. Nothing crazy. If you just it, they stay on mistakes most of this time. Yeah, and that's interesting to watch. Yeah, I will say that he uh, he almost made it like they, you know, Japan had one healer the entire time because if one was down, the yeah. other one was alive. It, yep. it just made it so difficult for him to, you know, get a good solid hold because somebody was always uh, running back. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's rough because I've been in that situation as a support player yeah. uh, where the other guy keeps dying. <laughs> it's yep. like, I need, I need you alive with me. Um, no more single healing situations, which is something I wanted to mention during the Mercy meta is single healer is pretty much dead, which is great. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, no more mercies pulling it all off by themselves. Uh, it's it's more healthy for the game. <laughs> yeah, and there's just the supports out there are so cool. Like Zenyatta, really yeah. cool. Um, Lucio's got just like a cool kit that he can play yeah. around with, and we're finally getting back into getting to see all of them kind of work together. Exactly. Yeah, it's sweet. But to finish it up here, we do have Japan on attack, and Russia doesn't make it easy on them. Right? They're still bearing down on them. Uh, Japan is able to finally cap the first point within like 30 seconds remaining. Yep. Um, but then Russia continues to start a cart at major points so they can never really get around corners. And it burns all of Japan's small time bank they already started with. Uh, so they end up holding before point two and Russia kind of went it. They went it all out. Uh, match three one here. Um, Russia, uh, you know, spoilers. Russia does not make it in the top two, unfortunately. Uh, but they give a fight. They yeah. fight for it, and they were they were kind of people said if there was going to be an upset, that's who it would be. Uh, they were close though. Yeah, yeah, they were. <laughs> they were. This is definitely a uh, Russia. Uh, you know, spoiler alert: Russia is one of the teams I kind of wanted to see move on because yeah. you know Russia. Uh, I think last year was a dominant team. Uh, maybe it was two years ago now that now that I'm thinking about it because Shadowburn played originally on on this Russia team. They were the you know. Besides South Korea, Russia was the you know the top dog. So, yeah, yeah. So, and this is the match that should have been on everybody's radar. Yeah, uh, this is South Korea and Finland, man. This is surprise. Uh, yeah, and we <laughs> talked about this match like weeks before it was happening. Yeah. Right, we we were excited to see this. We're just looking at the rosters, man. Uh, obviously, both very good, and uh, we get to see Fraggy play. So I'm always yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. always excited to see that. This like, is wait. and this is one of the first times we have all OWL players, yeah, um, in the rosters. Yeah. And you know, one thing that came to mind when we were kind of going back and forth about the hype hype up for this episode was that, uh, you know, back in previous the pre two previous worlds, South Korea rolled people in groups, right? Like they 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 beat people up in groups and then they beat people up in the playoffs in the actual yeah. eliminations. Yep. And now to the point finally where they're seeing some opposition. Uh, from countries and teams that usually wouldn't give them any trouble, um, and I think that's cool to see. That shows that there's growth, and you know, there naturally, South Korea is known to be the best at the moment. 
but they're the catalyst for that growth, and it's making all these other nations kind of step up to the plate, and that's great to see. Yeah, this is definitely going to make for an exciting finals, or the last, you know, the playoffs. I mean, it's going to be very yeah. cool. Just, I mean, we kind of knew going into the last finals, man, South Korea was just very dominant. So yeah. Yeah, I think this one's going to be a little bit closer, so it's yeah. always a, a lot more fun to watch. And, hey, Fusion um, was number two, right? Like, that's that's something that people keep bringing up, which makes sense. That yeah. team, that's a team of mixed players from all over. So if that can, yeah. if that can work, something can work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we kick it off on Lee Jong Tar. Mm-hmm. Uh, map one, uh, fate, man, just disrupting the back line <laughs> the entire time. Um, he's playing against his, Yeah, no joke. Just watch this guy swing into people. Uh, and the Finns really not sure what to do. They have this heavy tank line. Mm-hmm. Um, and Libero just gets all the room in the world uh, to just, you know, rain rockets down. And that's pretty much the theme of this map is yep. Libero uh, shooting people uh, while they're not looking at him and Hammond just, you know, squashing people. So uh, the Koreans it's, take a – oh, go ahead, sorry. No, it's crazy when they switch to Fate's camera because yeah. it's – the way he plays Hammond and how he's so confident in his movements, um, going in and out of ball, uh, swinging, grappling, it's – it's it's it makes Hammond more of an intimidating character to pick up because I have yet to touch the character. I, I know, yeah. I know, but like in any type of practice capacity for as far as picking a tank, I'm still kind of intimidated just because I can see that level of play and I haven't seen any good ones like on ladder. But just knowing how good he can be, I don't want to sully the character. <laughs> yeah, the swing in uh, slam plus minefield, uh, so devastating. Yeah, just. All that damage coming in on you, and you have to move out of that space. Man, it's uh, it's it's cool. He does yeah. disrupt the back line a lot. It was a close map one. Yeah. Um, bringing us to map two where uh, we get to see Carpe bring the doom. Uh, bring the doom fist out against Finland, yeah, who's already held the point at 99%. They had to switch some up. And kind of the theme of this whole map is uh, Fate plus Carpe, Bash yeah. Brothers, like the Mighty Ducks, <laughs> knocking people on the walls. Uh, yeah. And they just, man... All the disruption, all the disruption in the world. You can't do anything against it. Yeah, uh, this is another close one, a really close one. So this is going to be a tight series. We can sell just with these, you know, first two maps. Man, it's going to be good. So yeah. yeah, and you know, my takeaway from this is the South Korea skins look fucking sick. Like yeah, they, they look, look real good. good. Yeah, uh, they do look really good. They need to put those in the game. I don't know if they're going to do it. I don't know what the plan is. They won't tell I, anybody. You know, I thought with the summer games we might have seen something, mm-hmm. uh, but that's a lot of skins, right? You get one it for is. every character, uh, and uh, I'm sure Blizzard wants to sell those at some point. So yeah, exactly. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. What but yeah, happens. Korea up uh, one nothing going into King's Row. Yeah. So we pick up King's Row here, and you know, Finland kind of showing showing the goats. So we start off on yeah. attack, and this is actual goats. Um, and South Korea here using double snipe on defense, which they're comfortable on. We know. We know they're kind of the 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 first forefathers of the double snipe comp. Um, they're using that on defense. And Finland here, they win that initial fight, which is surprising, and they get a quick cap on point one. We have Carpe swap again to Doomfist to cause some havoc. But Finland doesn't kind of, they don't get phased. They continue the pace, and they move on through point two. So it's not till point three where Korea gets their first kind of stop, their official stop, about halfway around that uh, bend there and they do a good job of picking up players from this point forward and that they're able to prevent a full uh, a full fight which yeah. they like we talked about korean style is more about that pick off a character so you're only fighting you know an unfair fight and right. then take over the fight and do so again stagger so on and so forth it's more of a momentum tempo style yeah um but they're able to stop them from getting a full cap which is impressive considering finland started on a tear here yeah um I will. Uh, I got yeah. two things. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, instead of goats, let's go goose. Goose. You know what I mean? Because big goose, dude. Just. Oh, he had the hair kind of. See, it's like I've seen him once when he put it like in like a bun, right? But yeah. this time he had it just like combed back out yep. of his face. Yep. So, but because it's so poofy and firm, it like kind of was uh, like a Dragon Ball Z style, <laughs> like where it's like yeah. floating midair. Oh, yeah, goose, dude, it was always, always good place. to see him. Yeah, and then uh, especially towards point three, we see Fate come off the Reinhardt. He is losing almost all the shield battles with uh, Fraggy. Yeah, um, and Fraggy definitely shows his dominance on the Rhine. But when he switches over to the the Hammond man, yeah. um, it's an even battlefield at that point, and that's when Korea starts to take a little bit more control over the game. 
Yeah, it's funny. It's funny because you do hear a lot of the Koreans mention just how good Fracky is on Reinhardt. Dude, he's and how scary, man. He is because yeah. b- before him, nobody was really like, especially at that point in the meta, everybody was on dive, right? So you yeah. really got to see Reinhardt. Uh, yeah, but he stuck to it and he kind of made the name for himself. Especially those quick alt charges, man. You just it's ridiculous. He always has it. Yeah, yeah. You just gotta always play around Fracky <laughs> having an ultimate, and that's that's really difficult to do. Yeah, don't so. activate his trap card, man. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> well, we're moving to attack here for uh, South Korea, and we have Finland using double snipe here, and South Korea using the nano dive, uh, which has been coming up more and more. I still kind of am indifferent on the concept, but you know the thing here that stands out is, and go watch this. This is one I recommend to go watch because the cameraman sticks to Libero here, and the commentators do a great job of essentially giving you a play-by-play of the damn near perfect execution of dive, right? Uh, they follow Liberal the whole time as he's setting up, as he's you know building alt, as he's trying to set up picks or trying to maneuver, essentially maneuver the opponent into the rest of the team uh, kind of situation. And I put here that you know this clip should be used and will be used for educational purposes yeah, on absolutely. dive. Just watch it a couple times and it's, it's impressive to watch. Uh, and I commend them from a production standpoint to for recognizing that situation and going through with it because it, it was definitely uh, cool to watch. But after they, they execute it perfectly here, they win that fight. They get point one. Uh, Finland is able to stall the carts in the streets about once or twice. But South Korea are able to finally cap point uh, two in overtime. And, you know, Zappis has this huge bomb. He has a couple. He has yeah. a couple of huge bombs. And I want to say Impressive that Finland. Diva bombs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Finland seems to be good at setting up that combo uh, to make sure he gets that. Uh, and I bet he wish he has that. He had that. Uh, those bombs over in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> those setups. That was a rough season for old Zappas. Yeah, but they'll have New Jersey, so they'll be they'll be fine next year. I'm getting one of those jerseys, man. Oh it yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he has this huge bomb. Uh, it follows up with two more kills, and then Finland's able to win this map um, because they hold hold Korea here. So yeah, yeah. This was this was a good back and forth. This is a solid map. I would probably say, you know, we haven't done Map of the Match in a while, but this might be it. Yeah, this is a good one. A lot yeah. of different heroes getting played. Yeah, it's a lot of different a, styles, too. Yeah, absolutely. So now now you're your favorite map. Yeah. Uh, Ryan corrected me. This is not Hanamura. <laughs> Temple of Anubis. I just wrote Hanamura down because I, anytime we get to 2 CP, I, I lose interest really quick. So. This is actually really, just really quick match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate all of them. Uh, Volskaya being the least hate out of all of them. Mm. No, actually. Oh, man, that uh, Lunar Colony, man, that one's kind of... It, it's a little better the, now. The new wrong, one is, I, I don't mind it. Yeah, not as bad. The old one, kind of rough. I like the plants. Okay. Uh, Ryan, that has nothing to do with the game. You like plants, okay. Well, there's a visual aspect. Listen, the enjoyment okay, of the sure, game sure. is to the player. Don't Don't... Yeah, the plants are nice. I have those turned off. Don't graphic shame me. You, you yeah. have those turned off. This yeah. fucking top 500. Yeah. <laughs> I have all... Actually, characters are just blobs to me. It's just... Oh, what, my yeah, God. Just I, boxes. I just yeah, hit boxes. I can't even tell what Overwatch looks like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I stand corrected. Oh, this is yeah. Temple of Anubis, not Let's Hanamura. Let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we we see South Korea start us off on attack, and shit, this is a fast push. Yeah, just largely uncontested uh, by Finland. Uh, the dive comp uh, that Finn the Finns try to uh, mirror, mirror or mimic uh, against Korea just so bad. Yeah. Uh, it's just reminiscent to the Dallas Fuel dive, uh, just all over the place. You get Fraggy in one area of the map, you get Zappos in another map. What, you know, who are you diving? Yeah, um, and just a quick two uh, two cap. You know, from some South Korea. Yeah. Uh, largely doesn't matter because when Finland goes on attack, Carpe uh, plays this insane Widowmaker. He, and a, a lot of Widowmakers can learn from this if you're, you know, going on ladder. A lot of Widowmakers you'll see, they'll use their grappling for just defensive uh, positions, just getting away from somebody that's on top of them right then and there. Carpe will constantly shift away from, the, you know, around the map. You know, it just yeah. makes it very difficult to figure out where to dive. Uh, where to set up your Widowmaker, um, uh, just giving them no chance, just disjointed dive the entire time from the fins, and just a quick 2-0 uh, from you know, South Korea. It's sloppy because it's one it's of those. It's very sloppy. Actually, wait. 
Yeah, it's sloppy. Well, 2-1, I think you meant to say. Oh, did they get – they got a point? Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, they full it's hold. It's 2-0. Well yeah, they feel hold. Yeah. Full hold. But, no, it was sloppy. These are one of those games that you expect to see the first match, right? Because people are warming up. People are getting comfortable yeah. and testing yeah. out things and trying to gauge what the other team's going to do. But this is in the middle of your your bout here, and I don't I don't get yeah. it. Um, I, I felt like the Finns were um, forced on to dive, or they felt like they were forced into a meta to play dive. Uh, and I would have liked to see them run something uh, a little bit more uh, toward their style. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Fraggy die in the past on Winston, and we'll continue to see him die <laughs> in Worlds on Winston. So. And you'll, you'll notice here that whenever he has to switch to Winston, it like when he's Reinhardt, naturally he's the better Reinhardt between him and Fate. Yep. When he switches to Winston, Fate is definitely the better Winston. It shows. Yeah. Um, so anytime they force Finland to do so, it goes back in their favor. We're gonna hop yeah. into Rialto, the new the new guy, the new guy in the playlist. Yeah, or absolutely. the newest. Um, so we start with attack for Finland here. Uh, Finland have some has some trouble. They start off with goats, uh, but they or sorry goose, as you want to call yeah, it. The they start off with, they start off with goose, and we get to see Bates Hammond again, and it's so disruptive. It's impressive, man. Yeah. It's like it looks hectic, but the man knows what he's doing. Um, it. There is, they does push them to overtime for point one, so because they, they are struggling the whole time, they're finally able to use some all advantage to get through point one, and then they carry that through point two. But Libero here turns on the far play, has a big barrage, and he has a couple of them uh, this match. Has yeah. a big barrage here to stall them and pushes them to the situation where they're in overtime again for point three. And it's funny because the commentators say. They're like, Finland needs a team kill here. They have one more fight. They have to get the team kill because of how the spawns work here. And they do it. And they do it yeah. very impressively. So essentially we have a great grab from Linkser. We then have Taimu follow up with an EMP uh, on his Sombra. And then we have Zappis throw the bomb straight up in the air. It drops right on top of their heads. Kills everyone. Yeah, it this is, is coordination at its finest. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, go watch this if you can because uh, it's impressive. I watched this a couple times. Yeah, it was cool. So then we move into attack for South Korea, and Finland's on a high here after that beautiful display of ultimate usage. And they go goats again, and their plan here is to play aggressive at spawn. Now, I haven't seen this strat yet. Um, granted, Rialto hasn't been around for a long time. Uh, and to my memory, I can't see this be happening. But what they plan to do is go directly up to the gates playing uh, goats and essentially overwhelming them as they come out of the, the spawn points, right? Um, because they're not expecting it. They're probably not on a dive comp or haven't adjusted or on nano blade or something weird like that. It's a great strategy if they don't know what's going on, right? So that happens. They come out of the gate. There's like a minute or two where they're trying to figure out how to get through this death ball. Well, sorry, goats, right? And then the game lags out. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> Clay, when I say I audibly, it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is Blizzard giving South Korea a little insider information. It's oh. like, hey, you want to know what you're about to play against? Let's that shut is, the map. Yeah. This was huge. I've seen some. We've had some game pauses during the league regular season. Yep. But this one was a big deal. We're talking about an important game, an important yep. match in the whole in this series. Um, and for a strategy on a map that's, you know, kind of fresh to catch them off guard and put this in Finland's favor, I was just I everybody in chat was like hearts out to Finland because that had to be a struggle. Yeah, this is a ton of information given up right here. So yeah, definitely, definitely hearts out, man, because that's that's rough. It was new and it's innovative, and uh, it looked like it was uh, working pretty well. But when you know what to play against the next exactly. time around, it uh, makes it a little easier. Yeah, and it's kind of a metaphor to life, right? As an adult, you know, things don't yeah. always go your way. Sometimes surprises, <laughs> you know, things, roadblocks come up, and you have to. I hate to, it, Ryan. I hate it. You can't change things. <laughs> yeah. You can't go back to the past. So you got to keep moving forward. And you know, yep. Finland does that here. Um, so yeah, they try again. They reset the, you know, they reset the conditions to be exactly the same, um, as much as they can, right? Yeah. So they go back to the door and they try the strat again, and <laughs> South Korea just rolls over it this time because they're expecting it. So they they're able to focus fire as they need to. They yep. roll through point one and two, but Finland is able to finally stop the stop the cart um, close to point, and that's when they finally set their feet and they're able to do def play defense. Uh, and it's crazy because despite despite this whole setback, they're able to pull it out, and it finishes up, you know, ceremoniously with Fraggy's huge shatter. 
<laughs> he was knocking heads on this last point, man. Yeah, he was just killing it. He's he he's good, man. Um, yeah, yeah. So Finland take this, you know, take this map as well. This is it's funny to be the most predict or the the most expected game that everybody wants to watch is ready to watch, and then just kind of every map here besides Temple of Anubis because it's trash. Um, yeah. every map here is kind of exciting and it's a great yeah. game to watch. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. wrap this yeah, up we, for us. Yeah, we come down to a decider map, man. We go all five, and we all yeah. actually go all first three times on this one. First yeah. time in this group, first time in the world since this is the first group. Yeah, and this was this whole series, man. Great to watch. Uh, minus, like you said, Hanamura. What's it? <laughs> I, I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, so we finish it up on Nepal. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, <laughs> I hate those maps. Um, Dude, grind fest. Map one, just <laughs> yeah. a back and forth. Both teams go to ninety nine. Uh, we still see fate playing on the, uh, still playing on the Hampton, still being very disruptive this entire time. Um, has some, uh, like I mentioned earlier, has some of these big, you know, flies in uh, hooks, uh, lands these uh, uh, the the minefields and just slams into him, man, and it is killing it. But Finn's. The Finns hold it out, man. They yeah. uh, they win map one, um, and continue to give them a fight on map two. But uh, Libero, oh uh, man, we we talk about barrages earlier, man. He farms barrage after barrage because yeah. the Finns are running these big bodies, man. He just at first I thought, man, maybe they just have too much HP. He's not going to be able to come into it. We see Carpe switching over to the Widow at some point, yeah. trying to get any kind of picks and. Uh, he finally starts getting, you know, barrage after barrage, and uh, it gives Korea a map, too. You know what's funny? You see Libero in person, right? He's yeah. kind of a small guy. He yeah. looks innocent. Kind of looks like he's shy. But he plays DPS like a madman, like a, like a, like an abuser, like a hunter. Yeah. Um, it, his play style is definitely interesting. You know, this is like versus Jonak, who looks like a Stone Cold killer, and that's what he yeah. does in the game. So yeah. that's, that's kind of the differential right there. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, it doesn't seem real calculated. He's really blunt, and he gets a lot of kills this yeah. way, man. It's not like watching. No Carpe finesse. Soup. Yeah. yeah. There's no finesse. Yeah, right, right. Um, so, yeah, we get a map three, man, which is sweet. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I get to go all the way. Yeah, man. And it's down to the wire. I mean, like, actually the wire. We get to, what is this map called on Nepal? This is the this one. Is Sanctum. Sanctum, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got the big open gap. Um, and I will say that, oh, Let, go ahead. Yeah, let's talk, about, let's talk about this comp. Yeah. <laughs> So you remember back in the day when, you know, outlaws were letting me down and we had these game fives where, you know, we push it and then we do something similar to this where we decide to play nonsense. All right. And this could be the diamond in me talking, but <laughs> this comp coming out of Finland is Lucio Zen, Diva Winston, Brogan Soldier. Yeah. It's odd. All right, Mr. Top 500. Tell me what, the, where's the synergy? I don't know, man. Just to not, uh, it just doesn't seem like a lot of Who healing. Who is Brogan healing? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe one of the Winston or the Diva. It, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> I thought we would have seen, uh, and we've seen Fraggy play to rest in the past, and we've seen uh, Taimu play uh, Roadhog. I thought we would have seen some comp like that. Yep. Um, Ball and chain, man. It, it just, man, Mano and Mecco just have a uh, coordination on this map that is really tight, really tough to get Mono, around. Um, There's no Vano here. I know oh, you want fate. to be here. Fate and yeah, Mecco. Boy, That's fate. why I Young boy. Confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wanted to be mono, though. Should have been. But, yeah. yeah, it feels it feels right. It feels yeah. wrong. Yeah, I guess that would have been just too overpowered at that point. Yeah. If those two were on the front line. <laughs> <of course. laughs> they have to sandbag a bit. But yeah, the the fate Mecco combo just really coordinated through the entire map, um, and it really does come down to one fight where at one point uh, Shaz does switch over to the soldier just yeah. to get back to the map or back to the point. Uh, he has his ultimate, but uh, his team has essentially won the fight. The te Koreans are coming back, uh, and everybody is super low because yeah. you just have uh, the Lucio healing at this point. You just have the, the loose goose on the point healing everybody. Yeah, it's just not enough. Um, and Korea is able to just to wipe them just because you know, after a big fight, everybody's coming back. Everybody's super low on the side of the fence. So it was, yeah, a, it was a tight game, man, yeah, tight. Definitely entertaining. I mean, everybody yeah. expected it. Uh, but it's always great when your expectations come to fruition. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, w was there anything else that kind of? I didn't really take a look at any other games uh, this go around because there were a lot of furrows. Unfortunately, I saw, uh, Chinese Taipei went zero and twenty. 
Oh yeah, that's no, that's no, Hong country. Kong, Hong Kong, yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah, that's you know what? It's play. it's crazy because them getting a second team. We talked about this. Them getting a second team. It, it's baffling. I mean, I get it because money, right? Yeah, they got a but bunch of it. I don't think there's not going to be two teams with pure Jap, uh, Chinese players, right? This is going to be all an all, all the Korean talents, Chinese though. team. <laughs> Because all the talent's obviously not there. Like, they're struggling. I want a Japanese team, man. Or at least Yeah, that would have been sweet. Yeah. Or a Russian team. I would have loved to see a Russian team come out of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I totally forgot about it. We'll see. Or it's going to be interesting because yes. we're, get, we're getting to that point where we're going to start hearing players getting picked up. We're already seeing yeah. it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah. So, that's it. That's it. That's what we decided to do with these two games. Um, yep. As usual. You know, you guys can reach us at the Bird Watchers Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, on iTunes, feel free to leave a review if you're enjoying the show. Or if you're not, you know, honesty is key. Allow us to adjust as we can. Let us know if you're liking this new format. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, you can follow us on there. And we're always on the competitive Reddit or, uh, forums, right? We're always yeah. on, on there jabbering up. So definitely join that. Keep up to date. Post. Uh, and, you know, like we said, please. Enter for that contest. It's easy. Hop on there, make a comment, get this money. Yeah, it's easy absolutely. money. <laughs> yeah. And definitely tune in next week because All Star Weekend's coming up, and yes. uh, you'll get to hear me uh, uh, boast and gloat a little bit when I get my drinks. Just uh, worth it. <laughs> so, that's the most exciting thing I could wait for this weekend. I'm, I just cannot wait. Oh man, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to drink? What, what's your, what, let me just go ahead and get your order. I only drink top shelf. Oh my no, gosh! This fucking shelf. guy. <laughs> the, the highest quality. I only drink course. aged liquor. Yeah. I want um, Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh man! Uh, with Coke. <laughs> I'm gonna be an unclassy Scotch drinker. I'm just kidding. I would never taint Johnny Walker. Blue. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. I don't know. I'll drink like 10 uh, Long Island iced teas yeah. and throw up in your car. So there you go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. All right. But see Is you guys. It? Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. Have absolutely. a good one. And gals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, King, 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 B. One of these days, someone's going to put an end to you. I invite them to try.